Heaven can seem far away, but for one little boy, heaven is very real. Colton Burpo was just three years old when he got a sneak peek at what is to come. Take a look. How old are you today? Me. And what is your name? And where do you live? In Nebraska. Who's your mommy? Sonia. Who's your daddy? Daddy Popo. Who's your sister? Cassie. That was eight years ago. Looking at Colton now, you would have never guessed that he almost died in 2003. His father, Todd, tells about Colton's near-death experience in the book, Heaven is for Real. And he started throwing up into the toilet, you know, and uh, at first we're like, okay, he's got the stomach flu because the doctor said it was going around. Colton's condition only got worse as days passed. His doctor discovered his appendix had burst and infection was spreading in his body. Time was running out. Then we knew we were in bad shape when they, they say, well, you need to come out to the hallway. They separated us from everyone else. And then someone came to us and started talking to us that uh, we got to have surgery on your kid. It was tough. Um, seeing your boy be lifeless when he was a very vibrant child. And it was at that moment that we were looking at each other. I remember my wife holding Colton in that hallway, just us. He's not even moving. We went to the surgery prep area, and I remember them hauling him away and him just yelling at me, Daddy, don't let him take me. Daddy, don't let him take me. And I went back to the, uh, uh, the pre-op room where we had left some stuff, and I was finally alone, shut the door, and I just broke down, and I was mad at God. I just frustrated, fed up. And I remember telling him, I said, God, after all I've done for you, and now you're going to take my kid? This is how you treat your pastors. And I was calling our prayer chain. I was calling anybody that would be on the other line to get Colton on the prayer chain because it was bad. We were there in the waiting room for an hour and a half, maybe. Then I remember the nurse coming out. Uh, is Colton's daddy out here? I'm like, yeah, well, Colton's a, a, a in recovery and he's screaming for you. And I'm sitting there with him. And I remember my son in that room then looking up at me and goes, Dad, do you know I almost died? And my first thought was, maybe overheard the nurse say that, or maybe they thought he was under anesthesia, you know, and, and he wasn't. But it wasn't till four months after we got out of the hospital that we finally listened to our son. And that's where I got to see heaven. No, Jesus and some angels came and flew me up to heaven. And I said, so Colton, what did Jesus look like? I knew that the first person I saw was Jesus. He was wearing white robes with a purple sash and he just came down nicely and gracefully well dad jesus has markers dad jesus has markers i didn't know what he meant so i finally asked the right question colton where are jesus markers and he drops his toys down and he stands up and he just points dad they were right here he takes his fingers points to the palms then he bends over and touches the tops of his feet and looks up to me, that's where Jesus' markers were, Dad. When I was in the throne room of God to start with, so I got to see what that looked like. I was upset because I didn't know what was happening. What God did is he used people that, people or things that I liked to calm me down. From there on, I felt better. Then one day we're traveling together and he looks up at me and, Dad, you used to have a grandpa named Pop, didn't you? I'm like, yeah, he's really nice. Really? Yeah, you used to play with him as a kid and fix, work with him on the farm and, and shoot stuff with him. I'm like, yeah, how do you know that? Well, he told me. A figure came up and he was Pop. He asked me, are you Todd's son? I said, yes. He said that he was his grandpa. So that's where I met him. Yeah, Pop, uh, I was very close to him. And he was my most significant male role model when I was a kid growing up. Kid, but he was killed in a car wreck before I turned seven. Um, I was busy paying bills again, because um, that's um, my job. 
And he came up and told me he had two sisters. Well, he had to say it several times before he finally got my attention. And finally, I put myself down and looked at him and says, what do you mean you have two sis sisters? No, I have two sisters. You had a baby dying in your tummy. And I just looked at him like, well, how do you know you have two sisters? Well, she told me. And then he proceeded to describe her. She looked like Cassie, but she had brown hair. And first time when she saw me, she just came up and hugged me. We knew <laughs> this was true because he said, she kept hugging me. She wouldn't stop hugging me, Mom, and I didn't like that. Well, I'm not really the hugging type. I had miscarried the weekend of Father's Day weekend, which made it even rougher. And we thought we'd dealt with it. We got over, we accepted that the baby had died. But when he said he had two sisters, I was, I think I was in shock first and then trying to realize, what is he telling me? And so I knew that he had seen her, and after he described her, and he says, she's just, she just waiting for you guys to come to heaven. You know, as we talked about heaven, and he was telling me all these wonderful details, I just felt like I had to ask him, did he want to come back? I knew that I was leaving heaven because Jesus came to me and said, Colton, you need to go back. Even though I didn't want to go back, he said that he was answering my dad's prayer. I remember that prayer that irreverent, that disrespectful, screaming at God prayer. <laughs> I was like, he's answering that prayer? Today, Colton is a healthy 11-year-old and shares his heavenly journey with boldness. I learned that heaven is for real and you're going to like it. <laughs> I learned that heaven is real and you're going to like it. Why are you going to like it? Because you're going to be with a loving God. And we, we, we sometimes miss that. You know, if you've been doing wrong things and somehow or other you got it in your head that God's mad at you or that how could a righteous, holy God want, want to have anything to do with you? Or maybe some bad things have happened to you. And just like with Colton's dad, you're going, well, if this is the way you treat your pastors, uh, well, what kind of God are you? And we miss it. We miss the most wonderful message God's ever given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves the world. And that means you. That means you. And Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he still bears the marks of how much he loves you. He still has the holes in his hands. He still has the holes in his feet. He died for you. Now, why did he do that? Because heaven's very real and hell is very real. And Jesus wants you to be with him for all eternity. God the Father wants you to be with him. And he's designed special things to make you happy, to, to bring you joy. He's He's designed a whole place for you to be with him. Now, will you believe Colton? Here's a little boy who didn't know all the details of his grandfather and father. He didn't know that. He didn't know the detail that his mom had had a miscarriage. He didn't know that. But he goes to heaven and he learns all those things and he comes back with amazing details and a wonderful message, you want to go to heaven. Now, how do you do that? How do you get there? Well, you believe. Now, Jesus was asked the question, what, what do we do to work the works of God? What, what do we do to please God? And his answer, very simple, believe in the one that he sent. All you have to do is believe in Jesus, that he's the one, he's the one sent by God to take care of all the sins of all the people in the world, and that includes you, and that he is able to present you faultless in his presence with exceeding joy. He's able to do that. All you have to do is believe it. And then if you'll believe in your heart, and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. 
Now, some of you say, well, okay, I need, I need to see for myself. Well, that's okay. And you can ask Jesus, Jesus, will you show me? If, if what I'm hearing is real, will you show me? And if you mean it with all your heart, you'll find him. And the Bible promises when you seek me with all of your heart. Now, what are you seeking today? What are you looking for? You know, and, and, and start adding up. Is that worth eternity? Is that, is that worth what you're putting into it? On the other side, if you seek Jesus, if you seek the kingdom and his righteousness, then all these other things will be added unto you. It's not your own righteousness. It's not your own good works that are going to be the ticket. The only thing that's the ticket is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one comes to heaven but by him. Now, if this is for you, if this is what you want, you know, keep in mind all the other ways, you know, all the other religions, all the other supposed paths up the mountain, all require you to perfect yourself. They require you to think good thoughts and do good things and and perfect yourself. Well, you ought to know by now that's impossible, that you can't do it. Christianity is the only one, Jesus is the only one who came from heaven to take care of all of that, to take care of the problem of sin, the problem of all the mistakes we've made. He's the one that comes and changes all of that. And he reaches down to you where you are. He loves you where you are for who you are. And he loves you so much, he won't leave you there. He wants to change you so that you can be with him for all eternity. If this is for you, if this is what you want, if you want heaven, all you have to do is is ask for it. And so right now, do that. Don't change this channel. Don't turn away. Right now, bow your head, pray a very simple prayer, and let Jesus do all the rest for you. Pray with me. Jesus, that's right, say the name, say, say his name out loud, Jesus. I want to be with you. I want to know you. And right now I ask that you come into my heart, that, that you forgive me of all the things that I've done wrong, that you make me new again. And Jesus, I want you to open my ears that I can hear your voice. I want you to open my eyes that I can see and understand and know you. And Jesus, if you'll do this, I promise to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer, for I pray it in Jesus' name. Father, for those who just prayed, I ask for a baptism in your love. I ask that your love would just wash over them and give them the security that they will be with you for all eternity. Do it, Father, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Bible says, if you'll believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, You shall be saved. What I want you to do is make a toll-free call, 888-777-1999. Just say, I prayed, and I want to confess right now. I want to tell somebody that I prayed, and I asked Jesus into my heart. When you call, we've got a free packet for you, a CD teaching on how to live the Christian life. It's a new day for you, and we want to uh, guide you and and help you along the way. Um, So you you just need to know, what, what do I do now? Uh, One of the things you need to do now is get a copy of the Bible. Start reading it every day. It's God's love letter to his children. We also encourage you to join a local church, go through water baptism. But make that phone call. Start right now. Say, I want to call. I want to let somebody know. 888-777-1999.